Hello, I'm Dr. Bill Inman. Most of you know me, essentially. I've been developing techniques for frequency-specific laser therapy for the last 25 years. People continually asking me how the lasers work, what's the difference between the two lasers, and I've wanted to create this video to try to give you an idea of where that actually happens and how it's come to pass. In the late 1980s, early 1990s, uh, red lasers were used and they found they were therapeutically beneficial. However, they weren't that beneficial. And so in classic American fashion, it was decided to increase the power to these particular lasers, but once they increased the red laser past about 200 milliwatts, essentially they wouldn't laze anymore, and so they said, God, that's not going to work for me, so let's go ahead and increase the power using different chemicals. The neon helium laser won't really laze, it starts to ionize at about 200 milliwatts, however, if we use uh, galanium and arsenamide essentially as noble gases and we try to laze against those two gases, we end up with an, uh, a laser we can put a huge amount of power into, and that became the infrared lasers. Unfortunately, uh, neon, uh, the, the neon lasers essentially give us a 635 nanometer wavelength light, which is very therapeutically beneficial, but the galanium and arsenamide lasers, which they can put a huge amount of power into, produce an infrared laser light. Now, from your physics, you probably remember that infrared radiation, electromagnetic radiation in the infrared field is not visible, okay? It's a longer wavelength, essentially it doesn't penetrate well due to the Beer-Lambert law, Google it, Beer-Lambert law, essentially as much as shorter wavelengths such as red or violet or green, etc., etc., and that's fine, but the fact of the matter is people confuse wavelength and frequency, and so when we use an infrared laser, which is a heat, infrared is heat, and they're called cold lasers, but they're not cold, they're actually heating lasers, they heat the tissue deep, and what they do is they function to bring the temperature of the tissues up to about 54 degrees Celsius, which causes the amino acids of the proteins of the body to hydrolyze into nitric oxide. Alanine is the first one that goes. And nitric oxide is naturally vasodilatative. It affects the vessels to increase the blood supply. Vasodilatation decreases the arachidonic acid in the tissues that stimulates the pain fibers. So the pain is reduced and blood uh, supply is increased, which is therapeutically beneficial if we're trying to heal like a laceration or an injury quickly. And also it decreases the pain quickly. And that's a good thing. However, it only is good for about three to five days. After that, lasering doesn't do you a whole lot of good. By the way, nitric oxide is the way that uh, uh, Viagra works. The red laser is a different ball game altogether. It's a completely different kind of laser. It's like an apple to the orange, okay? Once they started using infrared lasers, they said, okay, 200 milliwatts, not effective. 2,000 milliwatts, not effective. 5,000 milliwatts, not effective. 8,000 milliwatts started to give them some uh, benefits because we're trying to force that electromagnetic radiation infrared heat deep into the tissue to get that effect. At about 10,000 to 15,000 milliwatts, we end up with a class 4 laser that has a potentiality to, to produce the effects that they want clinically, but they can also burn and compromise tissue, and so that became a problem. That's why class 4 lasers need to be used by a uh, authorized and a trained technical specialist, otherwise their animals and people can be burned with class 4 lasers, so they're quite restricted. We use um, a much less power, essentially, that does not, um, has not the ability to burn any kinds of tissue when we use frequency-specific laser. Now, a frequency-specific laser is a different ball game altogether, essentially. And what we do with it is we deliver uh, frequencies that are corresponding to various sympathetic vibrations of various target cells, for instance. If you have a fracture, um, your body is going to want to create connective tissue such as collagen to do that. The fibroblasts are going to do that for you. Your midbrain, the corpus callosum of your brain, is doing that all the time. But when it doesn't do that, you end up with a chronic condition or a slow healing condition or a condition that doesn't respond. What we do with the laser is we kind of rub the body's nose into this condition, essentially, and saying, yeah, you will fix this. And we do that by communicating to the target cell but the same way that the body does this. The body uses 634 nanometer wavelength light, red light, that's generated by the corpus callosum of the brain and moves throughout the body and it's turned off and on per second at a specific rate. That is frequency. People confuse wavelength, the color of light, with frequency, the time that the light is turned off and on per second. And for instance, the fibroblasts of the body will respond to 20.5 cycles per second. And so when the midbrain or the laser sends out that particular uh, wavelength of 635 nanometer wavelength light that moves through the water, the water molecule of the body, which is why we don't have to be exacting where we direct it, essentially 
inside of a couple seconds, it stimulates those particular areas of the mitochondrial DNA and the DNA. And so there's a section of histones that surround the, the DNA that are created by that section of DNA that are sensitive to that frequency. So when it catches that frequency through the electromagnetic radiation of 634.8 nanometers, then what happens is it splits itself open, messenger RNA is coated against the side of it, it runs out into the cytoplasm, grabs onto a ribosome, and which grabs onto a proline, hydroxyproline molecule, slams them together in a polymer, which is collagen, and actually creates these bundles of collagen, looks like Coke cans, essentially, with charges on either end, spits them out of the, out of the uh, uh, cell into the cytoplasm, and they're, since they're charged, they auto-arrange and produce a trabecular for the bone or connective tissue or ligament or, or uh, connective tissue for skin or whatever. And so this is what we do. Now, there are gazillions of different frequencies that we can use that all correspond to specific types of uh, mitochondrial DNA, essentially. And so all we needed to do was to figure out what those area codes for those particular tissues are and come up with a therapy that basically directs the body to heal at those particular levels. It's interesting to note that we use 635 nanometer because the body uses that. and It jumps from water molecule to water molecule. It's why your body is full of water. It's also why you have red blood cells and not blue blood cells. And also, when I peel off the skin on your body, you're red. And so it's not a coincidence. And so the body um, moves this energy through the system at almost the speed of light. For instance, if I was to use this laser here, at uh, 20.6 cycles per second to try to treat my knee, it would obviously, I would obviously want to treat my knee like this, but I can also treat my knee effectively by lasering my hand with that frequency because where the you know, laser is being directed is not as important necessarily as the frequency. So this is why we use this particular technology. It basically is um, a fascinating one, and it has been improved and improved and improved. This particular laser is not only a red laser, which we use exclusively, but also it's an infrared laser, too. So it's two lasers in one. If you have any interest in this particular device, which is the one that's about a third the cost of the ones we used to use, and is much more effective, it has 1,800 different protocols that we use dog, cat, horse, and human. And there might be a link with this YouTube video that will actually describe um, actually the other aspects of what it is and why we use this particular device and what we can use it for. We've been really pleased with this. We've been sending it home for about 14 months. And um, the reason that we use frequency-specific laser therapy as opposed to infrared therapy is that it directs the problem to take care of it. For instance, in pain in the knee, we would take care of the pain directly, just like a COX-2 inhibitor would, essentially, and also we produce vasodilatation, but we also treat the osteoblasts, osteoclasts, uh, chondrocytes, the nerve cells, and we increase the blood supply, the venous drainage, important, the lymphatic drainage, and also treat it as an inflammatory pocket. All of these can be programmed into one protocol and delivered over 60 seconds. And so the Technology has decreased in price and increased thousands of times in effectivity, and, and we're be delighted to do so. So if you have any questions, contact me at 208-640-3430. 208-640-3430. You can go to my website, vomtech.com, V-O-M-T-E-C-H.com, and there might be a link with this YouTube video, essentially, so you can get some more information about the why we use this laser, also why... Uh, we use frequency specific laser different from infrared laser. This is a class 2 and a 3B laser and virtually anyone can use it safely including clients and patient owners and patients. Okay, thank you very much for listening and have a super day.